Hey everyone, it's Deacon082, and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Crystal Version Nuzlocke. In the last episode, we took down the fourth gym leader of Equitique City, Morty, and received the Fog Badge. And in this episode, we are going to start out by talking to this guy. Ah, child, have you learned to dance like the Kimono Girls? If you go to their dance theater, an odd old man will give you something nice, I hear. Well, this must be the odd old man. Not only are the Kimono Girls great dancers, they're also skilled at Pokemon. I always challenge them, but I've never even left a scratch. Lad, if you can defeat all the Kimono Girls, I'll give you a gift. So this better be a big, a good gift, because we have uh, five Kimono Girls up here to defeat. So we'll start off from left to right. You have lovely Pokemon. May I see them in battle? So this is the very first Kimono Girl, and... There are five of these. If you are playing Heart Gold or Soul Silver, you will not fight these right now. And they all use different evolutions of the EVs, and I'm honestly not sure in which order they used them, so I was just kind of winging it by putting Subito up front, so I'll have to switch out here. The first one, I guess this is a good time to do the bios on the EV evolutions. The first one is Flareon, a fire type. Flareon has good attack, not very good at, well, it's always been considered probably the weakest because of its moves, but it's still not bad if you need a fire type. I wouldn't recommend it though, but if it's all you can get, go for it. Our next one, I always dance with my Pokemon. Of course, I also train them. So, this is just really laid back style. All of these are level 17. You could have taken them down before the gym. This one has an Espeon. Espeon evolves from Eevee by leveling up due to happiness in the daytime. Espeon's a psychic type with really good special attack. It's not that great defensively. It's probably one of the best you can get. I would recommend it. Just look how much this confusion is going to do. Well, that was a critical, but that's still a lot of damage. As, well, I like Espeon personally, but since I'm not going to be using Eevee, I don't have a choice really. I probably would have gone with Espeon, even though it's kind of overdone. But anyway, we'll take this one out with Razor Leaf. And Espeon's defeated. Subito gets a bunch of experience. Subito's kind of low on health, and I don't know which one is coming next, but we'll lead with Subito here. I'm hoping this is the water type one. I'm honestly not sure. This is Umbreon, the dark type Eevee evolution. It evolves from Eevee at night time when its happiness reaches a certain amount. So, it's basically Espeon, but the complete opposite. It's a lot more defensive, and it's it becomes pretty annoying. It's gonna be pretty hard to take down here. It's the first dark type we'll see, and dark types generally aren't that great in this game, but they're a lot better later on. There aren't actually any dark type gym leaders ever. All the way through the most recent games, no dark type gym leaders. That should change soon, but it's supposed to be like a really rare type. Subito grows to 25. And we defeat the third Kimono Girl. These really aren't too bad. I thought you could kind of tell by their outfits which one they'd have, but I guess it's kind of random. I'm hoping because this one wears blue that it'll be a water type. Actually, they all wear red in their sprites. Here we go. This is Vaporeon, the water type EV evolution. It's got a lot of HP, good defense, good special attack. It's an overall good choice. It doesn't learn a ton of good moves, but you can teach it water TMs like Surf. Waterfall, stuff like that, and it can be a pretty good Pokemon. This one goes down easy enough with a Grass type, or an Electric type if you would have one. And there we go, just leveling up Subito. 
And there is one more, but Sabito's kind of low on health, so I'm going to go for Elaine. And this trainer... Do you like my dancing? I'm good at Pokemon, too. Haha. She must be a very good trainer, obviously, and a very good dancer. This is Kimono Girl Miki, and she has a Jolteon. Jolteon is the electric type. It has really high special attack and speed, but it's kind of weak defensively. It's probably the strongest offensively, but as you can see, it goes down pretty easy. And because it's an electric type and no Thundershock, it's actually super effective to everybody on my team, pretty much. It actually paralyzed us, and I don't think we've seen paralysis in this run, but we have a chance of not attacking every turn. And that could be pretty difficult. It also lowers our speed, so we can't move, and this is getting difficult. Come on. Can we hit? Thank you. And we're gonna take out this Jolteon. Elaine's going to grow to level 26. Now our highest level only having her for a few episodes. But now we've taken out all five Kimono Girls, so let's talk to this man again. Not only are the Kimono Girls great dancers, they're also skilled at Pokemon. Yes, you already said that. The way you battled, it was like watching a dance. It was a rare treat to see. I want you to have this. Don't worry. And we receive HM03. It's a very important move right now. It's Surf. It lets Pokemon swim across water. Now, we kind of have one problem right now. And as we scroll down our TM list, Surf, we can teach it. But unfortunately, nobody in our party is able to learn Surf at the moment. So we actually don't have any water types right now, and that can be a bit of an issue because we are unable to Surf. So when we go on to the next route in the game, Route 42, you see, well, there's a cave, but there's also water we're unable to cross. So it looks like, after we pick up this Ultra Ball, we'll have to make a trek through this cave. And this is Mount Mortar. There are some po wild Pokemon in here, mostly Zubats and the like. But there is one new Pokemon we can find here in the daytime, and that Pokemon, if we can even run into one, that new Pokemon, hopefully, is this one. Well, no it's not. This is a Geodude. I mean, I'd kind of like to have one. The new Pokemon here is Machop, a fighting type that I have mentioned at on a couple occasions. It's really powerful physically on the attack side. It learns a lot of good fighting moves. I mean, I recommend it. It's kind of rare though, only 20% as we critical the Geodude and we're unable to catch it. Anyway, Machop evolves into Machoke, and Machoke is a pretty good fighting type. It can't fully evolve into Machomp, though, because you need to trade it. As we'll take out this trainer in Mount Mortar, who actually has a Nidoking at level 17, fully evolved. I don't know what kind of moves it'll have, but... Double Kick. Okay, it's a fighting type move that hits twice. Not much of a problem with our team. There's actually another Pokemon you can get here in Mount Mortar. If you trek all the way to the very basement of Mount Mortar, which you're going to need some HMs for it, including Surf. But if you make it all the way to the bottom floor, you will find Karate King Kyo. I'm not actually going to do this, and we can't do it anymore since we've encountered something. He will give you a rare Pokemon, if you meet him. And that rare Pokemon is Tyrogue, which we've already mentioned, that can evolve into one of the three Hitmons. So if you really need a fighting type, and you have enough repels and stuff, you can get one automatically in here. And then, if you come here at nighttime, or surf in here, you have a chance of finding another new Pokemon, Meryl. Meryl is a water type. It's more defensive. It's not very good, but if you need something for Surf, you can get it by just walking around, so you have a chance of that. It evolves into a Zoomeril, 
And I like Azumarill, but it's still not very good, so I'm not going to recommend it. As this part of Mount Mortar actually loops around, and when you leave, you'll be on Route 42 once again, but another side of Route 42 with some trainers. Hey! This is my secret place. Get lost, you outsider. Well, it's a secret place, but it's kind of right out in the open after you exit a cave. This Pokemaniac leads with the Nidorina, so he's basically the one we saw inside Mount Mortar, except his team isn't fully evolved. As you can see, Emma's pretty strong now, with the Headbutt and the Swift and the whatnot. Getting her some training in. We're about to reach a new city, but we're on Route 42 here, and there are no new Pokémon on this route. It's all stuff we've seen before, and evolutions of stuff we've seen before. We can catch Ekans and Arbok, Spearow and Fero, Radita, Raticate, I believe, stuff like that. I may be a little off because I actually didn't write anything down on the encounters in my notes here. And he should have used his Moonstone to evolve like the trainer back there. And one more. This trainer over here, I'm actually going to fight. The other one on the route, I'm going to try to avoid. This trainer is interesting. Let me demonstrate the power of the Pokemon I caught. Now the power of the Pokemon he caught, do you think, wow, does he have four Magikarps again? No, he only has one, one Pokemon, and it's a Quillfish, which is a water poison type. But that's not what's important about this trainer. This trainer, you'll really want to fight if you're doing a Nuzlocke. Because at the end of the battle, well, I'll just, I'll just wait to show you what he gives us. Wait, what am I talking about? He doesn't actually tell you, but if you talk to this trainer and you get his phone number after the battle, he will occasionally call you when he finds water stones. And Water Stones can be used to evolve several Pokémon, including one that we're guaranteed to get later on. And I'll get into that later on when we find it. We'll be hearing from him if we find something good. So we're going to attempt to sneak by this guy. I'm just gonna cut this battle. And that trainer actually had three ground types and was really easy to take out. We're going to see if we can encounter something on Route 42, because, well, might as well. Nothing here is new. We have an Arbok, which is actually fully evolved Pokemon. I mentioned before on Ekans' bio, way back in like episode 5, that I wasn't a fan of Ekans or Arbok, but I think we'll try to catch this one. Now we're going to put it to sleep, because... Fully evolved Pokemon sometimes can be harder to catch than first forms. So, if this guy ends up being on our team, which I can't guarantee, it's already fully evolved. It'll just have to level up to get on pace so it'll be stronger. And what am I doing? I forgot to put it to sleep. Oh well. And we get poisoned. Well, I can't heal that, but I'm gonna... We shouldn't be in trouble because Arbok's pretty weak. I just want to put it to sleep. Okay. And then... Well, this Arbok is asleep. When Pokemon are asleep, they're twice as easy to be captured. So, we'll throw this Great Ball and it should catch it with no problem. Shake once, shake twice, shake three times. And then we get an Arbok. Arbok, to intimidate to intimidate foes, it spreads its chest wide and makes its and makes eerie sounds by its spelling air from its mouth. And our nickname for this Arbok will be I don't know where I'm going with this, but we're naming it Bakahaka. <laughs> I don't know. It kinda Arbok Baka We're poisoned, but we got plenty of health. So we're just gonna deal with this as we reach the next city in the game, well the next town, Mahogany Town. So we're gonna heal really quick and then explore the city because the city's pretty empty. 
there's only uh, three buildings in the entire town. But there is a gym, so we'll uh, check that out. So we're here outside Mahogany Town Gym. Since you came this far, take the time to do some sightseeing. You should head north and check out the Lake of Rage right now. Okay, we'll do that. What is this building? This building is... Well, it's got eerie music. It's apparently a shop. We can buy tiny mushrooms, slowpoke tails, pokeballs, and potions. Uh, nothing here really seems interesting. Let's head east. This house is just a nothing. Oh boy. Hiya, kid! I see you're new in Mahogany Town. Since you're new, you should try a yummy Rage candy bar. Right now, it can be yours for just $300. Want one? Sure! We'll buy this Rage candy bar. Now will you let us through? Hiya, kid. I see you're new in Mahogany Town. Since you're new, you should try a yummy Rage... No, I just bought one. Can you let us through? Oh, whatever. This guy will not let you through. And the Rage candy bar actually is just a potion. So it's actually the same price. But anyway, next time on Let's Play Pokemon Crystal Version Nuzlocke, it doesn't look like there's anything to do in Mahogany Town, so we'll be leaving this town and exploring the surrounding area a bit. See you next time!